Erev Tov Harim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And earlier today, guys, we interviewed an amazing guest, Dean Henderson. Author Dean Henderson, written several books there. Uh, in just a moment, I'll introduce you to him from the interview we had today. But I wanted to take a few minutes to speak to you before the broadcast actually begins. And really, in a way, I shouldn't have to even discuss this issue here, but I felt like it's kind of needful because probably a little better than 50% of our audience are Christians. And I have watched over and over and over how Christians are really going at each other uh, over all different types of issues, doctrinal issues. Uh, the division is unbelievable amongst Christians. And at a time where we shouldn't be fighting with one another over doctrinal issues and we should be trying to stand together it still seems that Satan is winning. He's conquering and dividing the body of Christ. There are things, though, that are serious. There are issues that are very pertinent for the body of Christ, as well as for many of the other people that are listening to my voice today, because we have all types of individuals that watch this channel, including, including Jews, including Arabs, that listen to this broadcast and of other religions. And there's a very serious new world order coming our way. And we're going to find out many of us that are actually bickering between each other over doctrinal issues. You're going to find out you're going to need to be standing together a little stronger in the not so distant future. We invited Dean on because Dean has some very powerful knowledge over 5G technology. He had some amazing insights on historic side of the Nephilim, how they came into existence, some things that kind of complements the work that I've done as well. And I wanted to share those insights with you. Now, I may not agree with everything that Dean says, and I know as far as when it comes to Jesus Christ, me believing Jesus to be my Savior, you know, we have maybe a slight difference in views on that. But then again, there's a lot of people out there that listen to this broadcast that are not believers whatsoever. But our desire is to bring you information that we feel is critical, critical to you. So without further ado, let me introduce to you Dean Henderson. Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, we have got a very special guest in the audience with us today, uh, or via the internet here, uh, Skype here, uh, Dean Henderson. And uh, Dean Henderson, he's written many books. Uh, he's, he's a journalist, I, uh, from what I can see as well. He's been on RT, a lot of other programs there. Um, his website, hendersonlefthook.wordpress.com, that's his main website, and Dean has written extensively. I have spent the last several days going through his book, uh, Nephilim Crown, a 5G Apocalypse. It'll be on your screen for you as well, uh, and also all, everything down in the description, how to be able to contact Dean, order his books, etc. Uh, Dean, welcome to the program here. We are really delighted to have you on with us. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Dean, the, your book, Nephilim Crown 5G Apocalypse, I don't think there could have been a, a title that could have said it better than what you said here. Uh, it really covers everything. And as I have read through this entire book, um, the first thing that jumps out at me, because we've talked a lot about this with our own audience, as far as the Nephilim, is how they actually got here. I, I know we're going to kind of go over the entire scope of this. We're going to be looking at the Nephilim, how they got here, what the agenda is, uh, as you put it here, the 5G apocalypse, the mind control, the, you know, as I stated to many times to a lot of people in the past, I said that if they look at it from a biblical perspective, they always talk about the third temple. And I said, well, you know, in reality, whether they build the third temple, which I'm sure they will for the Antichrist, and I know you share that same view as well, but I said, and the ultimate goal is like Satan said, that's recorded, he wanted to be like the Most High uh, and, and, and sit in the temple of God as if he were God. Well, the Most High dwells in a human body, not inside of a physical building. Uh, and so in my perspective, it's always been the human body is where he's going to, is where he would want to be at. 
so looking at this 5G and knowing what you have already written on this as well, uh, and as a 5G apocalypse, the whole thing here is amazing. So uh, I don't know where to begin, but maybe we should start off with uh, just if you can give people the background um, about the Nephilim, how they came into being, because you bring in some things that I've never noticed before myself. Uh, I see it through the through the uh, Jewish bloodline, through or the Israelites, not just Jews, but the Israelites themselves. I saw it. In fact, I just did a video yesterday. Uh, I finally connected it in the book of Psalms and also in Isaiah chapter 57. Both those places there, David and Psalm 106, clearly show that intermingling. They just didn't translate it in English that way. Uh, of the seed lines there and then of course in Babylon where the priests themselves got involved but you have a little bit more information on that that I would really like to glean from if you can share that with us yeah sure um, well you know my take on it is uh, based on you know coming to this from different different scholars different uh, information um, the Bible, of course, being uh, very important. Uh, also, the work of uh, Sitchin and people like that. Uh, the Nag Hammadi scrolls. So, you know, my understanding of it is, you know, these these characters were around before the flood, and um, probably why the flood occurred um, um, was to get rid of them. And uh, some remnants survived and you know they're just it's interesting because as far as the new testament bible um there seems to be two different creation stories one is uh involves like all men and women coming you know into the world but not until the plants were created or the animals um and everything was ready for mankind and then mankind comes into the world and it comes in and multiple men multiple women it's not adam and eve per se it's it's just humanity coming into the world the other Creation stories involves, of course, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, the Adamus, as clay tablets in Samaria call them. Um, this, I think, is the genetic manipulation um, of humanity which occurred. Um, it's hard to say how many of us were affected by that or are a result of that, or how, and how many aren't. But I have my own kind of take on that. I think that uh, that I'll share with you in a bit. But at any rate, it was the temptation um, in the Garden of Eden. Um, naturally occurring, uh, the, the first version, when man comes into the world after the plants and animals, it, it depicts us as a more of a hunting and gathering society right off the bat in this paradise. Um, the Adam and Eve story involves getting kicked out of the paradise, Garden of Eden, and basically becoming an agrarian. Um, it also involves temptation, uh, you know, taking a bite out of the, the apple from the tree of knowledge, which to me indicates the the, the point where humankind began to worship the intellect uh, instead of operating from the heart chakra, from the instinct, from, uh, you know, which is God, which is how God comes through each of us and, and communicates with us. We got trapped in our heads. And uh, you take that to the logical extension of where we're at today with AI and technology. And increasingly, it seems like people are being uh, trapped in their, in their brains and their heads and their intellects. Which is a flaw, you know. There's there's some knowledge there, but it's a very shallow uh, and a very small part of knowledge. Um, sort of taking the royal society uh, version of, of what you've been taught about these lies, like the Big Bang, like evolution, like particle physics, that they pound into people's heads, and you have these preconceived notions, and you take those around, and, and they're the lens that you see the world through, rather than having the ability to. to take and just look at things without any preconceptions and that's what the Native Americans and the Aborigines did and that's called empirical novel knowledge that's actual science that's so in other words the indigenous people are the real scientists and, and the further Western civilization has gone down the road of agriculture industrialism uh, capitalism the, the less pure the science has become and uh, the Luciferian Freemasons that uh, that that basically you know underpin the crown the nephilim crown and the created the royal society as a propaganda arm uh they know that they know they're taking us into our heads and that's where uh, i believe lucifer uh can, can like you say inhabit our temples each of our temples which is our bodies and, and take us over uh with this sort of arrogant uh 
presumption that that we know everything you know it's just become with it with the internet now you know everybody knows everything you, you know they just think they know everything google is god right so you just google it and then you go tell your friends how smart you are not knowing of course that google has these you know qubit based uh computers now that uh you know, we don't know where that knowledge is coming from. It, it's very possible that that knowledge is all just coming through some portal from Saturn, from some entities, from something not human. I all, I actually see the AI as synonymous with the Nephilim or the Anunnaki or the Fallen Angels or the Wittikos, which is what the Cree called these things, or the, the Windigos, which is other tribes call them. Um, there's been a, a, a knowledge of these these entities throughout history, the jinn, of course, you know, the Muslims refer to them as jinn. But the way I look at it, from the Garden of Eden forward, um, that was the intervention, that was the manipulation of mankind. Also, that was the enslavement of mankind into agriculture uh, to feed Babylon, Ur, and the, and the cities which the Nephilim uh, became the heads of. This uh, resulted in uh, this massive enslavement of humanity into agriculture to feed the cities, but also it resulted in the emergence of capitalism and a class structure, which uh, you have the banker class that run the cities and didn't work. And then you have the, the agricultural workers who supplied the cities. And also with agriculture, you have a situation where one side of the valley has a drought, the other side has good rain. And immediately this farmer is borrowing grain from this other farmer and that just creates this class system, which was never really possible in a hunting and gathering uh, communal society. So uh, this is where I believe the, the corruption of man started. It was the way of life that we were living was so pure for millions of years, I believe. Uh, it's understated by anthropologists working for the Royal Society, the Geographic Society. But, but we were living uh, purely at, you know, with God in the right way we're supposed to live. And then this intervention happened. So... I trace it uh, from Samaria. Well, I, you know, basically starting in the enslavement of agriculture in Samaria, there was a branch that, that, that you know, and this, these people, you know, are the tribe of Dan or the Canaanites. They, part of them went uh, north into the Caucasus uh, from Babylon. And this is where you get, I think, the Khazarians and the Rothschilds become involved. Um, this is where all religion and spirituality was developed. Um, in my mind, uh, those things are, are all corrupting influences. The, the actual way to look at uh, reality, the nature of reality is just right action. Just do the right thing. Don't have the, these things about religion or even spirituality because that, that's when that all came about in Babylon, you know, the development of these things really. The other branch went to Egypt, I believe, and topped off the pyramids, which were probably built by the Moors. They're all, all also, uh, the Moors are, are just severely discredited throughout history because they were black. They were a maritime culture. They, they were uh, rivaling the, the maritime uh, abilities of the Phoenician bankers and the Knights Templars. And so they're discredited. So they probably built those things and then they were topped off, I think, by the Anunnaki uh, invaders, uh, Isis and Osiris being basically Anki and Enlil, uh, as we know them in the Sitchin uh, research in Samaria. So, from Egypt, uh, I believe they burned the Alexandria Library on the way out to hide the names, to hide the genealogies, to hide the fact that they were they were hybrids, human Nephilim hybrids, these rulers, um, which explains why they had these certain abilities that humans didn't have. Um, and by the way, humans used to have those abilities too, but they were hidden in, in the Grand Lodge of Cairo. Um, this is where Freemasonry, Kabbalah, and, and Muslim Brotherhood all came out of was to conceal the knowledge of who we are and our, our abilities to heal ourselves, our abilities to, you know, do things like teleport and just all kinds of things that actually we can do if we, if we knew we could do it. And part of that's been the shutting down of our pineal gland on the way. But I think they burned out the Alexandria Library. They, then they went across and they established the Roman Empire. And to do that uh, required the, the ships, the maritime, the Knights Templar, the Crusades, but they not only pilfered the uh, riches of the Middle East, they went around the world and took all the artifacts and all the gold and everything from all the native tribes everywhere and hoarded it and took it to Rome and started the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and again, these are these are bloodline families. They changed their name about every 300 years um, and, um, and they started the Holy Roman Empire. Well, then they, I do think Jesus was a, pretty much a rebel against the Nephilim crown. Um, but also against, of course, the the Sanhedrin uh, 
you know, Jews who were working with the court Jews, I would call them court Jews, because this has been the pattern throughout history. There's been, been these Hoff Jews or these court Jews who have done the bidding of the crown. And that's why, and they sort of shield the crown because some people get stuck on, you know, anti-Semitism. They say, oh, the Jews are behind everything. But, but really the crown is using them. Um, and that's not all Jews, of course, but it's just these few families like the Rothschilds that they put in front of the crown to protect the crown. Now, so if you get past the anti-Semitism, um, and if you, you know, which should be pretty easy, but then if you get to, you, you get to the Rothschilds, and then if you get to the Rothschilds and you stop, you have to realize that's the red shield. And they changed their name from Bauer or to Rothschild. And um, I would argue they're not Jewish at all. They're Satanists. And then they shield the crown, the Rothschild. So some people get past the Zionism. And Zionism, by the way, um, means grafting. It, it, it means S-C-I-O-N is C-I-O-N, and it means the grafting. So it, it's nothing to do with Jewish people. It has to do with the grafting of the Nephilim bloodline onto the human bloodline. Oh, I... And that's why I'm so obsessed with genealogy and DNA. And who's got what kind of blood? And they tend to be RH negative. These crown, these crown entities, whether it's the Windsors or the Bourbons or the Merovingians or the Habsburgs or the Algobrandinis or the Odicellis, uh, they tend to be uh, RH negative bloodlines, which is interesting. So it's a different kind of blood. It's a, it's a royal blood. It's purple. You know, it probably is a little bit more purple, and that's why the purple is the royal color, and that's why you know. The, the Sangreal, I think that, that that's what that word means, royal blood, holy blood, Sangreal. So, uh, and then they think they have, that gives them the right to lord over us. So they took us from agriculture and enslavement, um, and that, you know, in Egypt and in, and in Samaria and in the Mesopotamian region where agriculture, everybody knows, started. Um, they started the Holy Roman Empire, and, that, and, you know, they spread out throughout Europe. They take their, they divide it up into little, you know, family kingdoms. Uh, about the 12th century, they, they start the notion of fascism, which is the bundling of families. Um, you know, the, the fascist symbol is bundling of rods together with the axe on top. But it symbolizes the getting together of the powerful families and protecting each other's interests against the peasantry or the serfs. So there was a battle between the Roman Catholic Church and some of these bankers, because even the Roman Catholic Church... Um, for all their corruption and for the fact that they worked with these people a lot throughout history, at some point um, got clued in and they hung Jacques de Molay on Friday the 13th. That's where that comes from. Pope Clement um, and the King of France said, we've had enough of these Templars. We gotta, you know, they're black magicians, they're sorcerers, they're Satanists and they're bad and they poured all this wealth and, you know, we've got to crack down on them. So they hung Jacques de Molay to this day in America, there's a Demolay Society for the kids of Freemasons that they initiate them through. Um, and they, anyway, the Templars, and uh, they fled to Scotland at that point. That was, I believe, 1192. So they took what their wealth to Scotland, what they had of it, and they waited out in Scotland. And then uh, William the Conqueror uh, invited him down into the city of London eventually. They got help from uh, the, uh, the Bruce family, from the Sinclair family, and folks. Uh, some of the, the bloodline families who had already gone to the British Isles and were there and ran that uh, in Cameron for two days. And they started the modern version then of Freemasonry, um, you know, or, or, or entrenched it anyway. Came down into the city of London, developed the city of London. Um, after a stop in Venice, I, I missed the part about the, there was a war. The bankers went to Venice from Rome. Then they, they moved their way up into the city of London. Um, started the Dutch East India Company, the Bank of Amsterdam, which was the first private central bank in the world. Um, then started the uh, <clears throat> Bank of England and moved across the channel. And why? Because it was an island. <clears throat> Excuse me, back then, maritime defense was very important. So it was a very strategic place, the British Isles, to start what we now know as the United Kingdom. And that's exactly what the United Kingdom is. It's a United Kingdom. So there's families all over Europe and all over Asia, in fact, the Lee family in China, the Yamamoto family in Japan, the Khan family in India, Pakistan region, as in Genghis Khan bloodline, um, as in the Aga Khan Foundation, which supports all the MI6 Islamic terrorists trained by the Mossad. Um, but United Kingdom is where they have their wealth. That's, and that polit that's their political, their geopolitical center along with the Bank of International Settlements up in the mountains, again, a very safe haven in Switzerland. And that's why Switzerland is not part of the EU. 
because that's that's their big repository for money but geopolitically speaking it's all about the city of london there you have the bank of england which runs the offshore banking network all around the world whether it's bahamas cayman islands bermuda say the isle of jersey isle of man all this is hidden it's trillions and hundred probably hundreds of trillions of dollars in wealth this is where the royal nephilim crown hides its wealth um using people like george soros as their money managers and uh, the rothschilds as their money managers and uh they have things like quantum envy and curacao is one of their big uh their big uh, funds where there's all these royal money is, is tossed. And that's why people have this misconception that somehow like Bill Gates is the wealthiest person, you know, in America or in the world. Well, he's not, it's not even close. I mean, these, these royals have so much wealth um, and so much real estate, so much just uh, everything that, but it's all concealed through these trusts and through this Bank of England uh, offshore network, which is all a creation mm. of the crown. All right. So then you also have the anchor the Anglican Church, which is the, uh, you know, people go after the Catholic Church all the time, and yeah, there's a lot, a lot of problems there. But really, the Anglican Church, Church is the is the Freemason Church. Um, they're the more evil of, of the churches. Um, the, I should add that the Protestant Reformation was funded by the Venetian bankers to try to go after the Catholics. Really, because the cap, it's the doctrine. It's it's the fact that Catholics believe you actually have to do good action. To get to heaven whereas the protestants they don't really believe that they just think and then increasingly now with these evangelicals they just think oh i accept jesus as my savior i automatically go to heaven i can murder i can rape i can kill i can you know and it's crazy but you know and the catholic doctrine isn't for either i like i say all religions to me are are just so they get between you and god is what they really do they get you between you and, and jesus you and the creator is what mostly they do but but at least that doctrine so that's why they always go after the catholic and also the Catholic Church is probably the only thing powerful enough now that the, the, the Russian uh, bear has, the wall has fallen, although they're coming back. Um, but they're the only entity maybe powerful enough to actually crush the Illuminati uh, bankers and Nephilim crown. Um, and that's why they're constantly having to discredit the Catholic Church as much as they can. But but anyway, they set up the city of London. You also have a Royal Society there. You have Chatham House. You have the Royal Institute. Affairs, which spawned the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, the Canadian Council on Foreign Relations, the Australian Council on Foreign Relations, all these entities. Um, and this all came about during the round table where Alfred Milner and Lord Rothschild, Walter Rothschild, they developed this round table. They sent Cecil Rhodes to South Africa. They sent the Warburgs to Eastern Europe. They sent the Kulobes uh, and the Rockefellers and the Morgans to America. Um, certain people got different little areas of the world uh, to, to sort of lord over as bankers and resource managers for the crown. And out of the business roundtable came the Royal Institute of International Affairs and the Council on Foreign Relations and all that, which still runs U.S. foreign policy to this day, the CFR does. Um, then, um, you, then you have the Royal Society, which administers uh, the seven sacred sciences, um, and it's all lies, and this is something that's been handed down from, from the fallen angels, from the Nephilim. So it's like music, astronomy, uh, arithmetic, geometry, uh, rhetoric, uh, uh, logic, and um, I'm missing one. We're, anyway, we're going to we're going to come back to that. Uh, let me ask you a couple of yeah. questions real quick while we're going through this. I wrote a few yeah. little notes here. Um, one, just a comment on this, because I thought it was kind of interesting. You mentioned that the word Zionist really is grafting. Uh, it's a grafting with the Nephilim. And I I'll never forget, I was invited to a Trump rally here in Florida uh, that Roger Stone was the uh, keynote speaker at. I was the only journalist that was invited to come there. Of course, he had no idea, and none of them that invited me really knew what my beliefs were. Uh, so afterwards, Roger Stone, he comes up, he wanted to meet me, and he said, uh, he, he takes me by the hand, and he says, I'm a hardcore Zionist, and so is President Trump. So when you made that statement, grafting uh, the, with the Nephilim, that really caught my attention there. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I, I hate to say it, I, in my opinion, Trump has almost become a cult. It's like a sensation. Uh, you know, when he first came in, I was already leery of him. 
you know, and, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'll give him benefit of the doubt. Maybe they can try to work out some peace with Russia. We get rid of these sanctions and we can bring some normalcy in this world. But I knew I was over optimistic on that. But unfortunately, the people have been through the, through, uh, through Google Analytics and, and Facebook and all the things that they dig, the algorithms to be able to get, they, they found out what the people wanted. The people wanted, they wanted Hillary arrested, they want a, a wall on the border, and they wanted to make America great again. None of these, he even admits, none of these are his own things, but they, he spewed it out of his mouth and he became God to the, to the evangelical movement. More so the, I think it's, what is it, the New Reformation, New Apostolic Reformation or something like that, uh, these are the main ones that are behind him, which I also found a lot of ties to the uh, to the uh, money laundering with some of these groups as well. It, just elaborate on that, if you would. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly right. It is like a cult, and I think see Trump is a, cur a caricature of all of our misplaced fears, and with the AI you know, revolution, the fourth industrial revolution that's going on. Um, they can literally create a caricature of our, of all of our fears and that they will put that into a persona and, and there he is. And that's Trump. See, so that's why, you know, maybe Trump's not a racist, but a lot of his followers are <laughs> most of them. Yeah. Maybe Trump's not this, but his followers are, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that the, the end game to this is he's a billionaire. He's, 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 he's basically owned by the Rothschild. Wilbur Ross was the bond trader at Rothschild Inc. who bailed him out of his Taj Mahal mess. And in return, I think he became president and Wilbur Ross is very interesting character. He's the commerce secretary, right? So as commerce secretary, he oversees the patent office. So who administers the patent office? Well, Serco administers the patent office. And who funded Facebook? Well, NBNK funded Facebook along with the CIA. And NBNK was a British investment fund that Wilbur Ross started after his Invesco days because he also found an Invesco. Then he went over there across the pond and he started this. And, and his, on the board of directors of NBNK were like the chairman of Lloyds Bank, you know, the chairman of uh, HSBC. I mean, it was big time, big, big wheel British aristocracy, right? So the very day MBNK folded, um, Facebook started up, and also the also the very day Facebook started up, the the DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Administration, shut down LifeLog, which is Facebook. So in other words, Facebook is a is a military operation started by the um, by the Crown using the Pentagon, DARPA, um, funded by the Crown though, funded by MBNK. That's the Crown. And, and this Facebook is basically a way to totally mind control people. So they then once they had that there, Cambridge Analytica comes in, Analytica, Cambridge, Cambridge, Cambridge Oxford, Cambridge and Oxford are where the that's where the crown trains its academics. That's why Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar, um, and 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 so on. There's been many, but then they come in, and, and this Cambridge Analytica is is a subsidiary of a British defense uh, company, uh, which has been rigging elections in over 200 countries. They wanted Trump. They wanted Trump, not Clinton, because they knew that that's what the people wanted. But they also want to push the thing, push the whole debate to the right towards fascism, towards billionaire families running things like medieval times. It's more akin to their, their bloodline history, the Nephilim's history, where, you know, it used to be they just took half your crop and, you know, maybe the church got a quarter of it. And then you got what? Nothing. And this is kind of where the economy is going. It's like an electronic feudalism, electronic medieval uh, setup so i think the idea is to put trump in there then you then you turn the 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 democrats you just make them crazy and that's worked <laughs> i mean just look around you they're yeah. crazy they're nuts but they're nuts like trump triggers them so so some people respond to the fears that trump represents and they like him other people respond to, to the fears trump represents and are just it drives them nuts to see that caricature of, a, of an idea running the country so they go off the rails and start, you know, they just react to Trump. They don't, they're not proactive anymore. They just react, 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 react. And so by doing that, you further discredit any semblance of what was left of the left, which wasn't much anyway, honestly, and hasn't been for 50, 60 years in this country, really since the Wobblies and Eugene Debs, there has been no left in this country, okay? 
But you further discredit it. You pull the whole debate to the right. Um, you know, Clinton's center right anyway. I mean, Trump's right, Clinton's center right already. But you're pushing the whole thing right the whole time. And if you look at around the world, what's really going on, you look at the, the government in Hungary now, like <clears throat> extreme right-wing government. You look at the, the governments being overthrown, oh, whether it's Syria, whether it's an Assad, whether it's, uh, you know, the attempted overthrow anyway, whether it's Iraq, whether it's Iran, whether it's Venezuela, they're going after Maduro. Uh, they just took care of Evo Morales. They got rid of Rafael Correa and put in this Lenin Moreno, this stooge. So they're continually attacking the, the real left, the real revolutionary left that can actually take on the Snuffleum crown. Because that's the only thing that's ever going to work is when you start talking about expropriating wealth from, from trillionaires and you quit talking about, you know, transgender issues, gun control, abortion, all these things that just divide people and, you know, really aren't the solutions at all, obviously. So... This is what they've done, and it's all orchestrated. It's all algorithms. It's all scientific, uh, you know, and it's all being orchestrated. It's total mind control. So I think Trump is a cult leader, pretty much, and those people that follow him, um, it's crazy. And and to think he's some kind of savior, I mean, to think some billionaire, you know, who's, who's made his living just exploiting people, exploiting women, uh, exploiting everything in his path, Mm -hmm. Is somehow going to now be a man of the people and come here and yeah, he's going to do an investigation on nine one one and he's going to nationalize the Fed and oh yeah, come on man, really. So this QAnon is a total NSA again a program. It's an algorithmically produced yeah. program and this is why Trump went around see initially to Alex Jones and stuff because they knew that the margin of victory they needed to to win over Clinton was the alt right, what they call the alt right, which in a lot of ways is isn't alt at all. <laughs> You know, it's the same old stuff. It's Milton Friedman, Chicago School, Austrian School of Economics. This garbage, the Austrian School comes straight out of the crown. They fund the whole thing. The Chicago School and Friedman and all that stuff, that's Rockefeller family that funds the University of Chicago almost in its entirety. So all of these these right-wing economic treatises, um, which I guess want to, what, further privatize things, further, uh, you know, make the disparity of wealth worse, I mean... And then, and then they act like they're under attack, like, oh, capitalism's under attack, here comes the evil socialists. It's like, where? Where are they? Where are the evil socialists? I don't see them. You know, and, and it's just so, so they've had to ratchet that up this ne next election cycle, because last time they didn't do it, and oh my God, we got Bernie Sanders, and he almost won. Oh, they had to cheat on him, you know, so they cheated on him. And so this time, they're, they're, they're talking more communist, socialist, you know, boogeyman, and the guy Elizabeth Warren in there just in case. So she'll divide the votes. This neoliberal capitalist Elizabeth Warren, this kind of dingbat. She'll decide, she'll divide the vote from Bernie if there's any doubt. And plus Bernie's kind of jumped on the Democrat bandwagon a little nowadays. And you know, I support him to sixteen, but I don't know now. He's talking the same kind of crazy stuff. Um, I don't know. But I think the political situation is is almost beyond repair. And I think right now we're at the end times where it's just a spiritual solution. And the spiritual solution is really to separate now from this evil system, whether it's the political system, the economic system, just the, the technology especially. And that people need to disengage from it all and just back away and just remain calm. And don't take a side. Don't join a camp. Because that's what they're doing. They're hurting the sheeple into pens. Here's your pen. Here's your pen. Those are your choices. Um, there's going to be just a few of us that refuse the pens and then they'll harass us and run us down and try to you know, make our lives hard with social yep. credit. But that's my fate. I, I accept that. That's the fate of anybody uh, in, in this context of evil that's coming into this world. Because you're right in the beginning, you were saying they're coming into our, our bodies of the temple. That's exactly right. They're trying to assimilate us and initiate us into this Luciferian cult, you see, with all this brainwashing, all this mind control, all these false political choices. They're trying to assimilate us, and rather than take us over and, and subdue us with guns and military and invasion force and all this, wouldn't it be so much easier if they could just make us love evil? And that's what, right. unfortunately, you see around you. You see people beginning to embrace evil as normal. It's a normalization of evil is what's going on. And uh, that's just, you know, again, the, the only answer to that is God and Creator and disengaging from that. And go outside and, 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 and revel in the beauty of creation, uh, of the trees, the mountains, the ocean, the animals. Um, just remember that 
all God's creation. And that's perfect. And it all fits together. And there's no conflict. And, you know, the, the Royal Society scientists, they'll tell you, oh, it's survival of the fittest. And, oh, the, the weak deer that get left behind by the herd and all this crap. I've lived in the country my whole life. And I can tell you that's all a bunch of lies. The, the, the weak in the herd are always taken care of, looked after, especially, you know, by the rest of the deer. Um, it's all a bunch of lies. So, you know, that, that's just the one example of the lies, lies, lies. That keeps people scared, keeps people in, in the state of fear as opposed to a state of love. Right. And truly, there's your choices, okay? You can love and be godly or you can fear and you will be consumed by the Luciferian spirit. I got another question for you, Dean, as well. A um, uh, couple of things, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give both of them to you so you can elaborate on these. And, uh, and and so it's two different issues here. And then I'm going to be talk, going through some of the things in your book as well. Uh, one thing that people are going to be curious about, in your opinion, because, and I've dealt with this myself already from the, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from uh, the Hebrew writings, and I, I like to cross-reference what I have in the Dead Sea Scrolls because when I look at the Masoretic text, I realize there's some manipulation there you know the septuagint i like the septuagint better uh, i don't like the vowels that the that the uh that the <laughs> talmudists put into their hebrew writings so that's why i like the dead sea scrolls better because they manipulate all that but many people are going to ask the question how did the nephilim get beyond the flood uh, now I can see it clearly. I see it uh, like in the case of Babylon. I mean, it's told to us. It, literally, it's written even in their Hebrew Bible. It's actually written there. But I would like to get your perspective on that. Secondly, second question, totally different from that one. Uh, you were mentioning Freemasons earlier, and one of the things that I had discovered recently, and I did a video on this, is because my wife, she really kind of stirred the hornet's nest with the seven Noahide laws that are signed every year uh, in Washington, D.C. by every president, which there is no biblical basis for it. It's a Talmudic, it's Rambam writes it. I mean, on my bookshelf behind, I have all the Talmud, I have the Aruch Shulchan, I have all the documents that these guys use, so I know what they're up to. And uh, But the seven Noahide laws, or what they're talking about to govern the entire humanity, part of a new world order system. And when I mentioned the Freemasons, though, it's because I found that the 21st degree Freemason, this is going back to the 1700s when uh, Freemasonry was being, I call it, infiltrated. Maybe it's not. You're, a, you're an, an amazing historian, so I think you can really elaborate on that. But it seemed like that the Talmudists were infiltrating in England the, uh, in the 1700s, uh, the, the Freemason lodges there. And that's where they brought in the Noahide laws back then. They, I think they, they pronounce it Noahid laws in, in their writings there. But in uh, the 21st degree Mason, when you read what is written about him, he is basically the executioner for the Noahide laws, which all those, if they're broken, you know, they are capital punishment. And then, of course, they seem to mirror the Ten Commandments. So some people think, wow, you know, what's the big deal with them? But in reality, uh, for the Christian people is where I take it up the issue with, because if you believe that Jesus is divine, off with your head is the way that the Talmudic laws are. So if we can deal with that, how did the Nephilim get here? And then, of course, what is your thought, Freemasonry, and their connection, maybe in this case here would be the connection to uh, the, the Talmudist, because I know I've written, I've re read a lot of what you wrote in there about that. Um, as you mentioned earlier, the Rothschilds, uh, you know, from, from the Bauer family, they are the red shield, they're there to protect the crown. Uh, so there's a lot of intricate things there that I'm not aware of that you seem to have a, a deeper knowledge on that I'd really like to share with our viewers. Sure. Um, well, as to how they got here, um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a big question. I just tend to think that you know we're we're dealing more with uh, you know spiritual realm here. I mean, we're all incarnated into physical bodies and stuff, but really, well, it's okay, shell. Maybe maybe this will kind of help because uh, I'll I'll kind of share with you my thoughts here because I know some of the things that you've written here. You look at the sciences that they had back even 
you know, during the time of the pyramids, for example, 3,000 years ago, there's a lot of the sciences that they had there that we don't, are, are just now getting into today. I'll say it like that. When, when I looked at this, one of the key things that I noticed that, that uh, was being commanded through Moses was that we were not to get involved when they came into the land with the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Amorites, etc. Don't get involved into the necromancing, the soothsaying. Uh, there was some type, uh, we would call it today maybe witchcraft, but there was something that they were able to do. And I found this in the Dead Sea Scrolls, ironically, uh, that this and it, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls clearly shows that this is what happened in the Babylon as well. There was some type of thing that they were able to cross over. Uh, and of course, in Babylon, they were intermarrying with people that were already of Nephilim blood race to begin with. But they were also learning this technology uh, that yeah. it seems like maybe they're able to to pass through a dimension. And, and when I did the film on uh, uh, on the fallen angels are in prison in Antarctica, and I I could see in there it talks about in Enoch there is a a veil of fire, but it's like they had figured out how to get beyond that because clearly the fallen angels are going to be here on the earth all the way to the consummation of the end of time. If you look at that from the the book of Enoch's writings and that they would actually be involved in the affairs of man on the earth. So even though they're supposedly imprisoned, it looks like as uh, uh, the, the term, the coin term, I guess, with Alex Jones' uh, prison planet. In other words, the prison is here. Uh, maybe we're imprisoned in these human bodies, who knows? But, you know, that's where I'm looking at. Is there a is there a connection through the sciences that they had that they figured out how to get back into this side? Because most people, Bible-believing people, would think that when the flood came, they were all wiped off. But yet in the Hebrew scriptures, the word Nephilim is used. Not giants like you have in English, but Nephilim is actually used in the book of Numbers 1333. Uh, so that's the question. What, what's your thoughts on yeah. that as far as technology? Is that a way that they did it? Yeah, yeah. They did it with technology. Um, I think they did it with uh, corruption of humanity. Um, with technology, with these promises of this, oh, this glorious technology. And, and if you look at where we're at today, it's the same situation. People are being tempted by the technology. Oh, you got to have a Facebook portal. You got to have an Alexa. You got to have this. You got to have that. And these are all enslavement tools for the human soul that puts you back in your mind. So back then it was the same thing. It's like, well, yeah, we could have got rid of them. We could have just been, boof, all gone. But no, the humans were tempted. The humans were corrupted. This is why the temptation, the, the, again, the symbolism with the biting of the apple. Look at Apple computer. Look at the logo. It's, a, it's an apple with a bite out of it, you know, because it's the technologies. This is the technology that the Nephilim used uh, to tempt mankind, whether it's the building of the pyramids and all these moving of these big old stones and all this. You know, and even on the History Channel nowadays, you watch all these programs and, oh, these, these gods, they were amazing. They had this amazing technology. And, it's all like pro gods. Well, the gods are the Nephilim. The gods are the fallen angels. This is not a good thing. No, technology has destroyed this planet. Technology has always been the destroyer of planet Earth. That's the Native Americans. I mean, it makes life easier in in the short term, but in the long term, it makes our lives hell, and it creates a hell on Earth because it disconnects us from God's natural world. God built the natural world. Where this technology comes from, this artificial intelligence, this it's not from here. So I look at aliens, AI, the Nephilim, it's all the same thing. If it's not from here, it's not what God planned to be here. And yet, yes, they brought it into this world a long time ago. Uh, in the book of Enoch, we know all this stuff, this DNA manipulation they did, this, this, yeah, this science, this technology that they had. And it was wiped out, and that's probably why we didn't know about that they had this for so many thousands of years, because we weren't really supposed to know how to manipulate DNA. We weren't really supposed to know how to manipulate genetics. We weren't really supposed to know. We weren't supposed to go there. Yeah, we weren't supposed to go there. And, and again, we're going there. And so, yeah, it's probably possible with all the, the algorithms, of the AI, the, the aliens doing the thinking for us now, that, yeah, we can open portals, and that's that veil of fire maybe that's, you know, now we're just able to open that and, yeah, let the, the Saturn uh, death cult people 
run this world with their information, but we're not supposed to go there. And so I just look at the reason that they came back is because we got corrupt. We let them back with our corruption, with our own corruption. If you look around me now, this, this world is so corrupt. I mean, not just government, not just big business. You know, I, I look around me and I see it just corruption everywhere. Yes. Everyone just trying to sort of, I don't know, pulling over on their neighbor or just, I mean, just, just with human interaction. I mean, there's, there's good people out there, but there's a lot of people becoming corrupt. So I, I think it's just that simple. It's just the reason they, were, they came back is because of humanity and let them come back. So it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. And even if they weren't here physically, um, it doesn't even matter because it's the spiritual aspect. It's like if we could just cleanse ourselves of that, that desire and that need for wanting more, wanting technology, wanting um, these things that aren't natural, and just accepting and being grateful, being grateful for the creation, what we have, understanding that we're connected to everything. We're, we're relatives of the humans, yes, but we're also relatives of the four-legged creatures. We're relatives of the rocks and the trees, and all these things are our family. This is what God, this is the Garden of Eden that God intended us to live in. But no, it's not enough. So we want a portal, or we want an Alexa, or we want another laptop, or we want a smart car, or we want a smart refrigerator. Well, that's why we're going to get 5G enslavement. I mean, it's just that simple. It's our own, our own, we were tempted. Again, we're being tempted again by the serpent, okay? And and, and, and we're being, and, and a lot of people are, are accepting and are biting out of the apple and are getting in their heads, losing their hearts, losing their appreciation of what we have and wanting more and more and more. And all the great religious traditions will tell you hey, that's bad, you know? Well, that you should just be grateful. Let's do this. We'll save the Freemason part towards the end. Let me go into this next question because it's really where you're leaving off at anyway. Um, and this is going to take us down the 5G uh, rabbit hole as well. But one of the things that I kind of started looking at more from a spiritual side of this, but at the same time, what their plan is. When I go back to the Garden of Eden and I see the temptation that Adam... Uh, and Eve are, are placed under by the serpent, one of the things that I noticed is that, of course, naturally, God says the, the day you eat thereof, that day you will die, all right? So we say a thousand years on earth is a day with, with God, and we know that, of course, they never lived beyond a thousand years. There is a major pump up of a millennial reign, and, you know, on earth, and I'm not, I'm not, especially with our viewers, because I know there's a lot of people that believe in a millennial reign. And I'm not saying that I don't believe in a millennial reign, but I also believe that there is a, in this, uh, how would you put it here, with a fake millennial agenda by an antichrist system that it's, again, taking the bite out of technology in order to promise this longevity, which is never, because God didn't mean for us to live only for a millennium. He meant for us to live eternally, uh, you know, and he gave us everything that we would have need of. So really and truly, Adam and Eve cut their life short. They had eternal life. I mean, when they took from the tree of life, the tree of life is exactly that. God breathed into his nostrils, Chaim. Chaim is uh, his own life, which is eternal. There is no end to it. But... In this case here, they took instead that knowledge, and knowledge shortened their life. But as I see this new world order coming, and I know that we share that same view, Jerusalem is going to be the headquarters. I used to think it was the Vatican. I really laid waste to, to, the, to, the, to the Pope of Rome over this. Uh, now, of course, Pope Francis, he's a Jesuit. He is a, 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 a Jew masquerading as a, a Christian that is leading the Catholic Church underneath the, uh, or, or in cooperation with Israel, but it's to bring about the New World Order. Uh, China, as I've been told by Mossad friends that I, I have, is going to be the New World Power, and Israel with the technology that they have, and I've been told also by Mossad friends that I have that they are working with entities. I, I was told Flat out, there, he said, Steve, he said, in fact, the corporations are not even listed to where you can see it publicly, the companies. And he said they're trying to uh, integrate 
there, he said, literally, he said, we're looking for people with a certain DNA strand. And he said, they're actually looking for priests. He said, I'll just tell you, Steve, they're looking for Kohanim. Because he said, the Kohanim have a DNA that matches their entities. And he tells me they have 9,000 IQ. Uh, so we know we're talking about fallen angels. And he's made it clear that it's fallen angels. Uh, or aliens, however people want to look at that. And he said, they're wanting to take and integrate the AI technology into the human genome. And I think this is what they're going to promise to bring about their millennial reign is that if they integrate you, cross you with uh, this technology. Uh, and I remember Jana interviewed one time Harold Kaus Villa and Harold in Germany, uh, we were, he came to Prague and we were there. Our office used to be in Prague. And Harold was talking about the nanoparticles that are put out in the air. He says, when you breathe in these nanoparticles from the chemtrails, he said, they're basically, that's the nanotechnology that Israel created in order to take 5G and connect the two together. He says, you're already breathing it in. And he said, unless you get that out of you, uh, you're going to become the antenna for the 5G technology. And that's just one of the thoughts he throws. So I'm, I'm really putting a lot on you at one time here, <laughs> Dean. So, but as smart as you are, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So anyway, my thought is, is that Israel saying that they're going to have a cure for cancer, you know, all this kind of stuff. They're talking about longevity. They talk about the nano gold, things like that. Uh, they took the guy from Arizona, all the stuff that he had, took him over to the, to the Eastern countries. I always told my wife, they'll never see that again because that's going to be part of their new world order system. But they're going to shortchange the people. They're going to offer them as if it's something that the Messiah is bringing, which, by the way, I don't know, Dean, uh, if you're familiar with this two-part series, uh, you know, I got all kinds of junk all over this book right here. This here, the name of the book here, this is called the Josephic, Josephic Messiah, Leviathan, Metatron, and the Sacred Serpent by Joel David Bask. Uh, and Joel actually, uh, he writes in here, because now that they're, the, you know, the Talmudists are willing to come out with the Golan of Vilna to bring up, to talk about the Sacred Serpent. And they're really trying to integrate Jesus as part of that system, bringing it about. And, and I'm afraid Christians are about to fall in for this. Yeah, and they're going to take the bite right. right out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil rather than accepting the way of life that uh, the Eternal Father had set up for us in the very beginning. So, yeah. that's a lot. Here, I threw it in your lap. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like that's that's all well very well stated Stephen. i think it's all true and uh yeah the, this is where it's all going it's all it's going to be this massive deception you know if you look at what's going on right now we're in the age of deception massive deception luciferian uh way of doing things is to invert reality so you take the truth and you make it a lie you take a lie and you make it a truth and that's now that they're able to operate out of the open with this new world order agenda um and that's what the new world order agenda is is to turn this god's creation into a, a luciferian uh hell and and so yeah you're exactly right there's going to be some kind of probably alien deception this is why you're seeing all these shows about the aliens this is why you're hearing the government now actually um releasing that all oh, the navy saw these aliens and there's going to be this disclosure, like this. There's this disclosure project, even which I don't trust at all. All that bunch, because you know, who who are you to disclose to me anything? I mean, who are you working for? Who's paying your bills? Um, you know that you need to school me on aliens and stuff. So there's they're going to use that alien thing, and somehow they're going to hook that in with yeah, with the second coming of Jesus, and with this longevity thing you're talking about. That's the transhuman agenda, right? I mean. You know, look what Elon Musk is doing with Neuralink, you know, and, and, and basically going to just, you know, drill into people's skulls and put this little chip in the brain, man. And, um, oh, yeah, you can live forever. Um, the joke's on them because um, if, if anyone accepts that, um, that, that Luciferian way, they're, uh, they're probably never going to, um, they don't have salvation anymore. They don't go to the, you know, whatever the afterlife is, there's going to be none for them. So they may live forever on this earth, but this earth's going to be turned into a hellhole, and you're not even going to want to live here. 
and, but they're going to be stuck in it. They're going to be, this is the matrix. This is the matrix that they're going to be stuck in the matrix. They're going to be used as batteries because this is the Freemasonic project is to basically turn people into batteries, like negative energy batteries to power this, uh, this initiation, this inculcation, this introduction into evil that I talked about earlier being normalized. Because to, to bring evil into the world, you need to, to, to generate massive amounts of negative energy. So why do you think on Facebook it's all this fighting and acrimony and, oh, yeah, this, you, you know, gotcha, sort of gotcha, you know. I mean, it's just the whole Internet. It's just this negative cesspool of people fighting each other over things that don't even matter, you know. And this, this all just generates negative energy, and then people go away from the computer, and they feel, they feel sad, they feel angry, they feel outraged, they feel you know, disconnected from the world. That's more negative energy. And so th this is what they're going to do. And then they're going to sell it all as because of the inversion of good. Good is bad and bad is good. They're going to tell you that's all good. It's good for you to be addicted to technology. And it's good for you, you know, uh, uh, to be constantly outraged or sad or, or depressed or no, it's good for you, really. And of course, there's money in it, too. Of course, this is always also always follow the money, qui bono. And this is where where the money's at right now. If you watch the business channels, it's all about tech and AI and who's got the ability to, to do this because obviously there's a lot of money in this stuff. So it's really just the late stage monopoly capitalism, A, and okay, they took us, they enslaved us in agriculture, they enslaved us in the industrial revolution. Um, they said men go to the factory and then men did and then, and then they left the farms and they gave up their land and guess what, the crown got their land. And then come over to America, you know, enslave the Indians, go to Australia, you know, uh, enslave the Aborigines, because already the Europeans were inculcated and initiated somewhat into this Nephilim cult of evil, um, of just exploiting people and using people and, and not looking at the Indians as brothers, but as subhumans, really, which they did. So they brought this disease over here and to Australia and to all the New World and, and, and crushed the Indians because the Indians had to be crushed because they were pure godly creatures who hadn't been, hadn't been tainted by any of this Middle East craziness that the Bible describes. I mean, my view of it is the Indians wouldn't have to read the Bible because it's it's really, it's just carnage and bloodshed. And the only reason we should read it is because it's our history, really, because we came from that. But they didn't come from that. They were just victims of that, that, you know, was brought to them. And they were like, what the hell is this? You know, we're just trying to be happy. We're just trying to, you know, work four hours a week in a hunting and gathering society and have a lot of idle time, a lot of family time. And like watching our kids play and you know <laughs> all of a sudden they're just like in they're just they're just you know slammed with this neocolonial negativity yeah and and oh we have to conquer these we have to take all the gold and steal it from the indians and take all our stuff and just this disease this watiko disease this mindset of intellect again taking us over like carlos casanada said the, the intellect of the mind is the monster that stalks you you know and so many great writers you spensky talked about this and uh, and Gusharev and all the, the great writers of the time have talked about how it's your mind that really gets out of control and becomes very cunning, very manipulative. And, you know, if you just stay in your heart, you'll, you'll stay a good person. Uh, Krishnamurti is another guy that talks about this. You know, the brilliant people that have come through history have all talked about the same thing. And it's the mind that will deceive you into the alien deception, into believing that somehow this is tied with the return of Jesus somehow. And it's all going to be a deception. And I'm afraid you're right. I'm afraid most Christians are going to be on the wrong side when yeah. uh, when this occurs. And the only people that are going to be on the right side are people that stay grounded. People that that just I call it a bullshit meter. It's it's a pineal gland. Okay, they, they're, they're 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 trashing our pineal glands with fluoridation of the water, with vaccinations, right. with technology, EMF waves. But if you have that pineal gland and the ability to say that's bullshit. You have to keep that, and people might not like it. It's not politically correct, but whatever. That's what God gave you to discern, discern. You know, you have to discern because, which is kind of funny, because CERN is the place where they're opening these portals, and CERN is the place where, again, funded by the crown, by the way, CERN, um, this, this odd particle, they want to shatter it apart. Yeah, because they're smarter than God, so, oh, God couldn't have possibly made these nanoparticles that we can't even predict how they move. That couldn't possibly be true. So, you know, even though the, the, the truth of the matter is particle physics is all BS, and this is an electric universe where, yeah, it gets down to where it's mush. You can't see particles. It's just, it's waves, it's plasma, it's electricity, it's good vibes or bad vibes. It's not plasma physics. Another lie from the Royal Society of Physics. So, 
But they're just determined to keep pounding on particles and breaking them apart. And let's make another nuclear bomb and destroy some more stuff. And I mean, so the bullshit meter, very important. Yeah, people really need to be guarded. They need to be, you know, it's a good to be open minded. But, you know, maybe now we're at a time where you should be a little bit, you know, close that a little bit. If you know what you already know and just guard it. Look around you. Don't don't be open to just anything. Don't be tolerant to anything. Sometimes tolerance is bad. When you tolerate evil, that's not good, is it? No. So they're turning again. They're turning all these good words into bad, bad things. They're turning environmentalism into this fake climate change agenda. For example, <clears throat> I'm a huge environmentalist, but I got my degree in environmental studies, my master's. But now they're taking that word environmentalism, which is a good thing, protect the earth. That's God's creation. And they're using it as a climate change agenda, which is part of Agenda 21, which is part of the 5G rollout, which is to crush us and to depopulate us. So this is what's going on in the world, this massive deception. And the main thing to save yourself and your family is to have that bullshit meter in place and trust it. Not your mind, your heart. You follow your heart. Follow what your gut instinct is, because that's what God gave you. That's what you're not able to connect with right now. Because you're urbanized, you're technolo technologized, you're, you know, you're industrialized, you're capitalized, and, and you've been turned, it, it's sad what's happened to humanity. But we don't have to accept it. We can disengage from it, and, and we can become pure human beings again. And that's really what's going to save this world. The Indians will save this world. The, the mentality or the, the, the understanding, I should say, of the, of the native people is what's going to save this world from what's coming, if anything can save it at all. Yeah, I re <clears throat> remember uh, someone said one time as a, as a Native American woman, and she said, uh, child, they were putting on their tennis shoes running around. She said, don't wear the shoes. <laughs> That'll only kill you. If you you'll be sick all the time. Uh, because what a lot of people yeah. don't know is that there's negative ions in the earth, or, or I think it's positive ions in the earth, negative ions in you, and you need to be able to be barefooted on the ground in order to get properly charged. Uh, you know, that, that's that's a scientific fact, but, you know, the Native Indians, they don't need the science, they just know it was true. And and I really feel like the Native Indians are really thrown under the bus. I don't want to keep you a long time, so I think what we ought to do then, uh, I'll just have to save some of this other stuff for maybe another time, Dean, but let's go yeah. into the 5G uh, and, and discuss that, and, and, and maybe just while we're at it, I know uh, Morales, President Morales, he was overthrown by another CIA coup. That's what we did back in the 80s. We overthrew Nicaragua. Uh, I should have known back then. I didn't realize that myself. I was the good guy. I was a decoy that they would use for themselves. But uh, because I knew the families that were running drugs on ships, bringing them into America. Uh, and then we, the CIA went on a killing spree to silence those that they were afraid they were going to blow the cover of the operation. I knew a lot of those people that were killed. Uh, not that I knew the people per se, but we were all being told they were Russian spies taking them out. Uh, in the case of Morales in, uh, inside of uh, Bolivia there, again, it's, they need these natural resources, so they just, they just strong arm the guy right out. And, uh, and, and so, but <clears throat> maybe too, because of the lithium, and I know that's part of what they're going to need for this agenda that they're moving forward in the 5G technology. But if we can, let's look at the 5G technology, how they're going to use it, what, what your knowledge is on this, the dangers of this. Uh, now they're talking about 6G. Trump just signs this stuff to put it even in the urban areas, uh, you know, in every other house, things like that. Uh, and we'll kind of close out with this because I know I've had you on for quite a while already, so I don't want to over overuse my time here uh, with you yeah great yeah yeah it's it's a battlefield weapon system um 5g um this whole computer era that we're in is, is a weapon system it's a military operation okay it's a military operation to control humanity um they realized um a long time ago that's a lot easier <clears throat> to be able to monitor surveil uh gps um, people that, you know, know where you're at, know where you're going, know what you're shopping, know what you're doing. And also, yes, mind control you because the information doesn't just go one way. The information also comes into your mind that's, that comes through the computer and the television and the radio and the newspapers and everything. So, you know, what we know as the media, they used to call it propaganda. You know, they just used to call it propaganda. 
And then they started calling it media to give it a veneer of legitimacy. Before it was called propaganda, it was called witchcraft or sorcery, which is where really all science comes from. It's all sorcery. Um, ma- it's all black magic, you know, because it's, it's just a way to sort of hoodwink the people. And um, so media gets between you and reality. A medium gets between you and reality. You don't need a medium. You don't need anything between you and what's out the window. Okay, so that's the first thing. So 5G is just an extension of, of already a weapon system. In fact, when Kennedy's regulators, uh, when IBM took the idea of their computer, their big Cray computer, to the Kennedy administration in 63, and they said, we want to start selling this to the public, and Kennedy's regulators said, no way in hell, this is a weapon system. This could be used to subdue entire populations of people with, 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 with disinformation, and which the Pentagon had been doing with it up until that, that point already. And then came the internet, which was ARPANET, which came from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Administration. It used to be just an NSA program and that was definitely used for psychological warfare against the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians or whoever. And again, the NSA people in the early 90s, mid 90s, they couldn't believe that this thing, this internet was being, gonna be released to the public. They were shocked, they were just like, man, this is a weapons system. You can't just let people have this. This is going to be bad, and it has been bad. But the mid-90s was a big turning point. This is when you had the Clinton-Bush kind of mafia running the show for, you know, consecutively for a few there. And um, this is when a lot of bad things happened. And then Tony Blair in Britain, he destroyed the Labor Party and called the new Labor Party and pulled it to the right, deregulated the city of London even further, got the euro-dollar market, which had just started up in, like, the 70s. See, because before that... U.S. corporations couldn't take their money offshore unless they were buying or selling product. And with the opening of the euro dollar market, all that money, all the corporate money in the city of London or one of its offshore entities and avoid taxes and also launder drug money, launder, uh, you know, human trafficking, you know, money, gold money, you know, oil money, arms money. So everything became, you know, dirty and opaque. So the technology enabled this. It's not a coincidence that it came about at the same time. All of this needed technology to really be utilized. And um, but now we're fast forwarding to 5G. And 5G, um, it goes way back to the RCA Corporation in England. Actually, it goes back to this, you know, uh, Marconi, the telegraph. And Marconi's invention, the telegraph, was was usurped by the RCA Corporation, a British corporation, even though it's called Radio Corporation of America. It's always been a British crown control company. They turned Marconi's uh, invention into, into weaponry because that's what they do, you know, and, and it, was the, it was sonar. They developed sonar for the British Royal Navy with this. So out of RCA came Serco and General Electric, and it's General Electric that's making all the smart meters, um, and, and they've made a lot of the advances in this technology. And then Serco is the company that controls, through its administering of the U.S. Patent Office, um, sort of keeps a lid on, keeps an eye on, and controls the 5G technology. The first patent of which was in 1991. Richard Walker, working for Hewlett Packard, came up with the first uh, 5G patent or Internet of Things patent, where the idea is just to connect everything in this world so it all talks to each other, communicates with each other, and makes our life so much easier. Um, but um, so anyway, the 5G battle, battlefield system, it, it developed into, you know, radar, into LIDAR, and it's the same exact technology. It's an over-horizon weapon system, which you don't see coming. So um, it's very possible with the nanoparticulates, like you were talking about with the chemtrails, that our, our bodies, we're breathing that stuff in, we're becoming antennas. So we're going to be part of the 5G. It's the Internet of Things, and we're, we're going to be part of that. Internet of Things, literally, and pretty sure the plan is to in- introduce eventually through a, an economic crash, which could happen at any time. Um, Mark Carney, the Bank of England president, was in Jackson Hole this summer talking about how the U.S. dollar was disruptive and we had to go to a digital global currency. So that's what's coming. They just needed a crisis situation, some kind of a crash. Then they're going to try to bring in. Yeah, a microchip, definitely. I mean, they already got the watches, they already got the, the goggles, they already got, you know, Regina you know, Darpa runs around and brags about this tattoo she has that she can buy and sell things with. So that, that's the plan, is to bring, and this is where Bitcoin comes in, um, 
And sorry, Max Kaiser and all you Bitcoin fanatics who I respect otherwise, but you're wrong about Bitcoin. It's not going to end central bank monopoly or hegemony. It's actually going to reinforce it and make it easier for them. Because the idea has always been to go to a digital currency. It'll probably be under the IMF, under the special drawing rights um, you know, regime that they already have set up. And then they're going to introduce this microchip. And since you're already antennaized and everything, it'll be really easy for you just to, yeah, go around and buying and selling and, and if you don't accept the chip, um, you won't be able to. And that's, it's in, it's in Revelation 13, it's right there. So yeah. um, those of us who don't accept it, our lives are going to be harder initially. But again, I think um, the joke's going to be on the people that do accept it. Um, because in the long term, if you follow the Indian path, and if you just drop the whole system and you, you start living a simple life and you go to the mountains and you scrounge and do anything, get together with people that are like-minded. Your life in the long run is going to go back to paradise. You'll go back to heaven. Maybe that's what heaven even means. Maybe heaven's not out there. Maybe it's just right here and we make it or we don't. And the other people are going to hell. <laughs> and they think it's going to be easier because, oh, I can buy and sell with my chip and everything's great. And I got these goggles and everything's great. And that's just going to be a train wreck. And probably it's going to fail because I don't think God's going to allow it to really go to its end. And it'll be like a great flood or be like a solar flare. It'll be like some situation that, that will come about that, oh, these, these humans were tempted again, sorry, we got to start over. And then there'll be a remnant of people, I believe, like I think the Aborigines were the remnant this last time around, because they just seem really older than anybody else and really wise. And they and that remnant will, again, have to start over with humanity and, and see if this time we can resist the temptation of technology, Nephilim crown AI. And, uh, you know, that's what I want to be. I want to be part of that remnant. And, uh, you know, so that I, it, whatever it is, it's just, you know, you just have to live with right action. And, and, and it's a time where, you know, you, you might think the path that they're giving you looks easy, but it's going to be a hard path. And the one that looks hard is probably going to be easy. So just you have to use your own, your gut, you know, and you have to stay on the right side and do the right thing. And then I truly believe God will guide you. If you let God guide you, he will guide you through this. Oh, <clears throat> Dean, you've said a lot of information, and I appreciate the time you've taken with us today. Uh, again, Dean's book, Nephilim Crown, 5G Apocalypse. Uh, you can see the link in the description below. Henderson Left Hook, uh, wordpress.com is Dean's website. Check it out. Uh, I, I'm sure if you get this book here, it'll really educate you a lot on what's going on a lot more than what we've covered here uh, a lot of the things that are that are happening around the world uh, when you pick it up it's one of those books you don't want to pick down and i'm not a major reader but it was one of the books when i picked it up um, i had to read and continue to read there and you know if, if you're a christian there may be some views that that, that you may not agree with but uh look at look you know Read it and, and see those things, though, that you can understand, that, that go with what you think to begin with. You'll, you'll, it'll help open your eyes to what's really happening in this world. Um, Dean, I really believe, is a good man, and he's done an awesome job in trying to help wake up humanity to the evils that are happening in this world. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Dean, any closing words you'd like to add? Just want to thank you for having me, Stephen. And... Uh... Yeah, um, I really appreciate it, and I, I really respect the work you've been doing too, brother. So just, just keep it up, and um, see you on the other side. Sounds great. God bless you, brother. Thank you, and thank you guys for watching. Erev Tov. One second.